Hello comrades, you watching Red Ivan Airsoft and today we'll talk about uniforms and equipment of the MVD personnel during the beginning of the Second Chechen War. Before we begin, I need to mention a few things. First, I want to say thank you to Kyiv-based project Chechnya 95, Igor Sarmin and Walter Lotz for help with materials for this video. Secondly, different MVD units, whether it was Sobor, Amon or various combined militia units, known as SOM, Svodny Atriat Militsi, received their supplies from the same manufacturers. The main suppliers or manufacturers of the significant portion of the uniforms and equipment were Vera, later known as Anna, and POSM, SSO, and Slavyanka. However, Slavyanka was mainly producing stuff for the FSB, so MVD members uh, would need to put some effort to get their stuff. I should mention that the uniforms and equipment of the MVD units during the early period of the second Chechen campaign did not differ significantly from what was used at the end of the first war. Therefore, to demonstrate some equipment elements, I will be showing earlier photographs if they are available in better quality. It is worth noting that so-called uniform number 8 was actively used, which means that some elements were self-obtained, while others were exchanged with different units. For example, RD-54 was actively used by MVD personnel, while Cascade Vests were utilized by the Naval Infantry Forces. So no more disclaimers and let's start our conversation with hats. Militia personnel primarily used black balaclavas and black winter hats. Berets with MVD, Omon or Sober Insignia, Army Medical Bandanas and Uniform Caps. It could be dark grey as the uniform of the militia of that time or uh, something in camouflage. In my case, this is the patrol cap, which comes with Kukla suit, made by Slavyanka. Uniforms. As in the first campaign, there was an active exchange with the army. MVD personnel could be seen wearing Barviha suits in airborne and infantry cut. In some units, Afghanka-style uniform could be a standard issue. KLMK suits were used by militia forces during the summertime. The Grand Pabutan, which was supplied to Amon and some other internal troops units back in the late USSR, survived until the beginning of the Second Chechen War. But the main suits in MVD were Noch 91 and Kukla. Noch 91 or Night 91 uniform was developed based on the Mabuta suit in 1991 and was used by the special forces of the internal troops and other MVD units. Early versions of the Noch 91 were produced in the standard dark grey color, just like the patrol uniform also known as PPS, and Amoeba green camouflage. Noch 91 was also produced in two more Amoeba variants, grey Amoeba and another version of green Amoeba, and also in Kamish green and Kamish blue. Noch suits in all these patterns were actively used since the first Chechen war. Kukla, on the other hand, is the universal camouflage suit developed within the MVD's design department in 1993. Although it resembles Mabuta and Notch, it has several significant differences. Looser cut, weld chest pockets. A universal camouflage suit, in Russian costume uh, universally camouflированный, makes the acronym Kukla, which is doll in Russian. The earliest samples I came across were manufactured in 1994 in the Barviha or VSR-93 pattern and in Russian adaptation of the British DPM, which was also nicknamed Kukla by the analogy with the suit itself. In reality, Afghanka suits in the Russian adaptation of the British DPM had been produced since 1992 and even appeared during the storm of the White House in 1993 also known as Moscow Crisis. Back then, there was no such name as Kukla. Also, I came across Winter and even pilot suits in this camouflage pattern. The pattern of Russian DPM is based on the British DPM version of 1968, but there are some differences. For example, the shape of the spots in Russian pattern is directly copied from original, but printed in two colors. The size of the pattern of the British DPM is 50 by 50 centimeters printing with four colors over the white fabric from the lighter to darker. The Russian pattern is 60 by 60 cm, 
printing over the previously dyed fabric with three colors edge to the edge. Also Russian pattern is rotated 90 degrees. A piece is taken and looped again. Therefore the Russian DPM isn't a complete copy of the British DPM, but rather a new pattern developed based on it. It is worth noting that the Ukrainian company Temp 3000 produced suits similar to Kukla, but the pattern was closer to the British DPM, with altered coloration. These suits were used by the SBU operators in Iraq in the early 2000s. So it can be confidently stated that the Kukla is the name of the suit, but not the pattern. And according to the labels, there are several variations of the Kukla suits. Kukla A, Kukla M, I don't know what the difference is, but all Kukla M I saw were produced in less camouflage pattern, which is Russian woodland. The earliest photos from Chechnya, which display the usage of the Kukla suit in Russian DPM pattern, were dated 1995. Let's continue exploring the details of the Kukla suit. Mine was produced by Slavyanka. Two chest insert pockets, fastened twist buttons. Jacket features classic color design, but this color can be used as a stand color. Shoulder epaulets for ranks, fastened with buttons. Sleeve pockets fastened with velcro. Elbow reinforcements with openings for the elbow pads. Cuffs with velcro fasteners. Mesh insert in the armpit area. The jacket fastens with buttons. There is an inner pocket on the left side. It does not have a flap and fastens with a single button. An elastic band with the buttons to adjust the tension is sewn into the jacket for comfortable wear over the trousers or tucked in. Trousers. Button fly closure. Two front slash pockets. Two lower patch pockets similar to those on Mabuta. Fastened with buttons. And an elastic band sewn into the waist. On earlier versions there were also buttons for suspenders. On the right side there is a pocket with a flap and a strap designed for a knife. Originally it was developed for Todorov's knife for the diving reconnaissance. Later this pocket was used by the paratroopers for the strap cutter. It seems that this pocket remained as a rudiment, because an AK bayonet won't fit in there, and it is a mystery which MVD standard knife could fit into this pocket. The rear pockets are different. The right one is inset and the left one is patched. Both patterned. There is no reinforcement on the back of my trousers. But it was present on the earlier models. There is another buttoned lower patch pocket on the left side. On the left side among the seam there is a velcro opening. This suit was not meant to be worn over any other uniforms, so I have no idea why it is there. There is a mesh insert between the legs for ventilation. Knee reinforcements feature openings for the knee pads. The trousers have double legs and strings, similar to those on Gorka. So what are the main differences between Notch 91 and the Kukla suits? Kukla has a looser fit. The chest pockets on the Kukla coat are welt pockets, while on the Notch suit they are patched. Different construction of the inner pocket. The pocket on the Notch 91 suit has a flap and is made of waterproof fabric. The sleeve pockets on Kukla have flaps with two velcro closures, while on Notch 91 there is only one velcro closure. Kukla has a mesh insert for ventilation in the armpit and the crunch area. Notch 91 has openings for the built-in knee pads, although the latest versions like you see on mine also have these openings. On the back of the left trouser leg of Kukla there is a regular rectangular pocket, while on Notch there is a pocket for two ROP signal flares. There are also differences in the design of the knife pocket. In addition to the aforementioned items, suits and coveralls from NPO SM and WBZ, wind water protective suits, commonly known as Shorshun or Rustler, due to the rustling noise made by its material when new, and uh, various winter suits, Zimachi, were actively used, including camouflage patterns with unofficial names such as Tali Sneg, Thawing Snow, Arech, Nut, Kamish Sini, Blue Reeds, Kamish Zelony, Green Reeds, Padlesak Seri, Grey Underbrush, Padlesak Zelony, Green Underbrush. By the late 90s the products in Les, Russian woodland camouflage, which we discussed earlier, began to appear. The earliest kukla in this pattern that I came across was manufactured in 1997. 
Companies like Slavyanka, Splav and several others produced clothes and equipment in this pattern. Also more exotic shades and camouflages could be found, such as Kirpich, also known as Amoeba but more reddish in color, or camouflage that was called Zebra on the Veterans Forum. By early 2000s, Gorka suits started gaining popularity. T-shirts. Personal used olive color t-shirts, Chernyashka with light blue and dark blue stripes, and civilian t-shirts. Leather officer's belts were commonly used, but on some pictures soldier's belt with star buckle or miscellaneous commercial belts could be seen. The most common load bearing systems were Vera M, Vera Anna V95, there were several modifications depending on the year of production. My load bearing system is a third generation in Kamish camouflage pattern, which appeared around 1998. The vest features 4 AK double mag pouches, so you can carry up to 8 AK magazines. 4 hand grenade pouches, 2 on each side. Below the mag pouches, there are 2 pouches for Vogue 25 grenades. Each can hold 4. Two individual first aid kit pouches, one on each shoulder, and three utility pouches on the back, large one in the middle, and two long pouches, one on each side. These load bearing systems were produced in different camouflage patterns by Anna Company and were also copied by the local tailors. I even saw one in Bhutan camouflage pattern. You can find more information on the gear guide, they have a very nice article on this topic, but it is in Russian. Load bearing vests from NPO SM were used, such as Kaskad and Tien U. Tien is shadow in Russian. Load bearing vest compact, Vidra vest in Orech camouflage pattern, in late stages MVD officers used Tarzan vest, and miscellaneous load bearing systems from SSO. Army issued load bearing systems were also used, such as Poise A and different modifications of Sheisha 92, 6 Sha 92 in English. Additionally, they were load bearing systems tailored locally. Body armor vests. I cannot list all of them, but to name a few Kara 2, Kara 3, Body armor vest module, Kirasa. Occasionally, army body armor vests such as 6B5 were used, but it was relatively rare. Sometimes combined militia units known as SOM were seen using Mirage armor jacket. As for helmets, MVD officers used Sphera helmets, often with a cover in Barviha pattern, the Sha 1 and Maska 1 helmets. It is worth noting that MVD units preferred to operate with a lighter gear and often prioritized increased ammunition load over heavy body armor protection. That's why my set does not feature body armor. In the early stages, the standard MVD Amon and Sober shoulder patches were used, which might have variated in appearance depending on the unit's region. On the back of the gear, the patches with the inscription Militia Amon and Sober were actively used. On the load bearing systems and body armor from NPO SM, as well as on the suits and vests from Vera Anna, curved patches Team Special, Special Forces, and later Spitznas were often seen. Interestingly, photos of the Sober personnel often show patch known as Combat Unit or a Rifle Star and the Fist. As far as I know, this patch was designed for the 6th Special Purpose Squad Vitis and was based on the patch of the Cuban Special Forces. However, while the Vitis insignia features AK rifle, the patch used by the Sober officers features the PPS submachine gun. I have an interesting variation of this patch in my collection with the blue background. Backpacks. Mainly backpacks produced by the aforementioned companies were used. However, RD-54 backpacks acquired from the army were quite common. And even Vishmishki duffel bags were occasionally used. RD-54 backpacks were often used as intended, but they were also repurposed as the pouch donor to modify the load bearing vest. Special attention is given to backpacks in a Rech camouflage pattern, which were commercially available. Additional equipment. Officers with GP-25 underbarrel grenade launchers could carry an army pouch for walk cartridges. Soviet army dressing and SMART tourniquet could be carried in the pouch or on the rifle itself. ROP flares. Pistol would be carried most of the time in the Soviet leather holster. But in general, pistols were not that useful. 
and the main purpose of the pistol was to reach the destination, where you will get a rifle. Miscellaneous portable radios, mainly produced by Motorola, were used, Army General Issue Canteen, Airborne Canteens and Commercial Canteens were used, but mainly uh, carried in the backpack. Sometimes regular plastic bottles were fitted into the utility pouch of the Vera Vest. Bayonets 6H4 and uh, 6H5 were used side by side with other available knives. Boots and shoes. They mainly used commercially available and issued boots of that period, but I don't have exact models to share with you. If there is an expert, please write a comment below. I only know that army boots called crocodiles were used. Since 1997, MVD units have been issued with microfiber boots, but again, I do not know the model. And whenever possible, they also use civilian sneakers. Therefore, I am using Adidas Gazelle. But I would recommend to go with Moskva Kede. Few words about the firearms. Here, of course, everything depended on the specific unit and the nature of the task they were performing. For the regular SOM members, the main weapons were mostly Makarov pistols and AKS-74U. But even for them, the full-size AK rifles were more common. Amon's arsenal was wider and was compatible to the armies. AKMS, AKM, AK-74, AKS-74, AK-74M, machine guns, RPK, RPK-74, RPK-74M, and PKM. Sniper rifles, SVD, and SVD-S. And RPG-18, RPG-22, and RPG-26 reactive grenades. GP-25 underbarrel grenade launchers, and even RPG-7. Sober officers had their hands on all the above, as well as on some more unique firearms. VSK-94, 9A91, SVU, Stechkin pistol, and even Otse Graza. In my case, it is an airsoft replica of the AKS-74 with GP-25. Now let's see how it all looks together. I hope you like this video, put like, comment, subscribe to my channel. If you want to help channel financially, links are in the description and see you soon.